What's going on YouTube family? Welcome to Automotive Life. My name is Lucky and today we're going to be talking about why dealers refuse to actually lower prices. Now that's why I'm wearing this green shirt because it's all about the money and I love to use props and this is why I'm using this one to represent the dealers. This is a dumpster fire. Dealerships are in very big trouble because they can't move cars and I'm going to show you how banks putting pressure on dealerships are going to help lower the price of the cars. So if you're thinking about buying a car, do not buy anything until you watch this video. So when you're driving by a dealership, I want you to know that most of the dealers do not actually own the cars that are on their lot. A lot of these things are actually on a line of credit, which is called a floor plan or a flooring line. These cost dealers hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars every single year. And I'm going to show you how this is actually going to put pressure on dealers to lower prices and how some dealers refuse to do this. And this is why they're going out of business. So when you see all the cars on their lot, just think in your head that every single car costs them a monthly payment. So if there's 30 cars at a small independent lot or there's 600 cars at a big franchise store, each one of those cars is costing them money every single month and we're going to give you a breakdown on why this is going to help you get a better deal. Now when you're buying a car, it's all about the time. Time is the most crucial thing when it comes to the floor lines. So let's say this is August 1st. Dealers still think that the market is great, everything is good, so I'm out looking for a nice luxury vehicle and I found this beautiful G-Wagon in Miami, Florida. So. I bid on this thing and I win it. So August 1st, like I said, the clock starts. I purchased this car. So I bought this car for let's say $10,000 just to keep nice round even numbers. So let's put 10 grand on there. Now, the second you buy it, you're gonna have what's called an auction fee because it costs money to actually buy this thing at auction. So let's just put $500 on top of there for your auction fee. Also, when you purchase this on your flooring line, they actually charge you a fee to put this on your line of credit. So if you're a regular person, just imagine that every time you swipe your credit card, even if you're buying a dollar soda, they charge you $5 to add that on to your credit. That's how flooring lines work. So let's just put another uh, $200 on here for a flooring costs. Now, to get this car from Miami to Vegas, so this way I can get it fixed and serviced, is another $500. And it's gonna take them about anywhere from a week and a half to two weeks to get it shipped to my door. So let's put another $500. And as you can see, we're already over $1,000 and the car hasn't even left the auction lot yet. So let's fast forward two weeks and the car finally makes it to Vegas. Now the first thing us dealers do is we inspect the vehicle, we do recon. We wanna make sure that everything is great so this way we can get the most amount of money for it. Now, August 1st, this car was valued at anywhere from 15,000 to 17,000. So in our heads, we're gonna be like, all right, we wanna make $5,000 clear, so let's go ahead and put $1,000 in recon. We're gonna change you know, the tires, we're gonna do some paint work, some service work. So let's put another thousand dollars on there. So this way we know that we're gonna make probably close to $5,000 free and clear. Now, after the recon work, it's been another two weeks. So it's officially been in our possession for 30 days. So now what happens? We have to pay our monthly curtailment fee for August. This is a kind of a weird way they pay it. Not only do you pay interest and fees, but you have what's called a principal pay down. Now this could be anywhere from five to 20%, but just to make this simple, we're gonna put $300 just for fees and interest and stuff. So we're gonna put that right here. Now the reason why they have principal pay downs is to help the dealers keep paying this car down so if they gotta take it to auction later, they're not upside down and you're gonna see how this is gonna play a crucial role and how dealers are getting themselves in trouble. So, all right, so now it's officially uh, the first day of September and it's on the lot. So we're ready to sell it. Now, most dealers, like I said, when they get a new car, they're very stern on lowering the price. So they're getting calls. Hey, I'll give you $15,000 cash. I'll give you $16,000 cash. And they're like, no, we want $17,999 because all dealers want more than what the car is actually worth currently in the market. So they decide to price it very aggressively for more because they think with the mentality that they can't replace it. This is a great car for the money. So this thing continues to sit. Let's just say after a few offers, they turn it down. Now we're heading into uh, the first day of October. Well, now we gotta pay September's flooring fee. There's another $300. And also, when you keep these cars on your lot, you have to wash and put gas. So let's just put another $100 on there just for fun. Once again, another 30 days go by. Remember, the book value is dropping because the days of the pandemic of cars actually going up in value are over. So now, remember, 60 days ago, this car was worth probably anywhere from 16 to $17,000. 
Now this car is worth closer to maybe 16 to, or excuse me, 14 to $16,000. But what do the dealers do? They still don't reduce their pricing. They hold firm at $17,995. So let's go ahead and fast forward to, now we're at the end of October, the beginning of November, and they still haven't sold it. So let's just throw on another few prices. So now we're in today's market. Now, November is traditionally a really bad month for the car business because a lot of people are, you know, traveling, getting ready for the holidays. Some people are purchasing uh, Christmas gifts. Some people are having big Thanksgiving trips, going out of the state or sometimes out of the country. So November is not really a good month to sell cars. So now they're sitting here thinking, wow, well, the book is dropping. You know, should we lower the price? And so they run the book and they find out that the car now is worth thirteen dollars to $15,000. And they still don't want to lower the price. They're like, we're going to hold on to it and they add another bunch of recon fees. Now, as of today, they're into this car, $13,400. So with all these things they've accumulated for holding it for the last 90 days, it's cost them $3,400. And then on top of that, remember the high book of this car was $17,000 when they first bought it. So that's why they put it for $17,995. But today the car is worth anywhere from thirteen to $15,000. So you can see how now they're actually a little bit upside down in the car because now they're getting cash offers for thirteen, fourteen, maybe even $15,000. So what do dealers do? They're so worried that they do not want to lose any money that they're holding a certain price. Some dealers have this in their head where they will not sell this car unless they can get maybe $3,000 or $4,000 or $5,000, a fixed dollar amount, some sort of what they call pack to make sure that they profit a certain amount. And this is what's leading to these dealers being stupid and going out of business. Because traditionally, the way we were taught is every 30 to 60 days, if you can't move this inventory, you need to reduce the price and get it out. I always say, you know, it's easier to replace the car than to replace the customer, just move it. But unfortunately, during the pandemic, a lot of these dealers were taught a lot of bad habits that you can't replace these cars to hold on to them because you need, you, you need to get as much money as you can because you can't find another one. But as we've seen in the market, there's more and more cars coming available. The supply is totally there and demand is dwindling because banks are simply not financing the same amount of money. And this will brings us to our next factor. Now, remember, when you drive by dealerships, and let's say this is at a franchise, store. They have a holding cost of $3,400 just on this one car. Now times that by 300 cars on their lot, you're looking at over a million dollars, which is absolutely insane just for holding costs. Now let's say all their cars, they purchased them back in August. Well, let's say their, their whole portfolio, their, all the cars on their lot were worth $2 million. Well, in today's value, it's probably looking closer to about maybe 1.6, maybe 1.5. So they've lost anywhere from $400,000 to $500,000 in value along with the holding costs of over a million dollars. And you can see why this is putting pressure on dealers to actually lower their prices. Now, I read a lot of your guys' comments and I see a lot of people you know, complaining and some people actually crying and whining. They're, they're not lowering their prices. The market's still high, blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna tell you this right now. This is why you need to make offers. If the car's been there for over 100 days, you get aggressive. If it's listed for $20,000, you offer 15. Tell them you have cash. No BS. You'll walk in there, write a check, and you'll leave. You keep making offers like this over and over again because eventually what's going to happen is the owner or somebody else is going to look at that uh, sales manager and be like, you're not selling this car. Why in the hell is this 100-day-old car on my lot? And then the dealer is going to get in trouble. So they're going to basically drop the sale. And you want to be fresh in their mind when this happens. That's why I tell everybody, don't worry about the pricing they put on the internet. Their whole goal is trying to get out of this leveraged debt. So they don't want to take a loss because what happens is if a sales manager loses so many uh, dollars on each vehicle, it goes against their bonuses. So the sales manager loses money and sometimes it makes the sales manager look bad and they get fired. And so that's why a lot of these sales managers refuse. And, and sales guys chime in in the comment section below. They refuse to actually lower prices because they don't want to get fired. They don't want to look bad for the ownership. And so literally, stupidity is kicked in and greed and they won't do this but don't be afraid to make offers on cars that are over 60 days old now back during the pandemic our average days on market were somewhere around 7 to 10 it was the lowest we've ever seen now we're over 60 days i think it's like 68 almost 70. this is higher than what it was back in 2019. so you can see the supply is building up unfortunately interest rates and everything else the banks are getting stricter so it's harder to get these loans but there are deals out there to be had and there's something else i want you guys to know as a dealer, I would much rather sell this to a customer 
and lose a couple hundred dollars, hopefully I'll earn their business in the future and maybe get some service work out of it, you know, compared to taking it at the auction. But a lot of these arrogant dealers have been taught so bad and their ego gets in the way of their business where I'm not gonna accept this price and I'm sure you guys have seen it. I've done it as well. I've made offers, they told me no, they told me no, and now it's selling at auction for less than what I actually offered them. And so this is some of the dilemma that you're gonna run into when it comes to buying cars from the car market. Now, unfortunately, as we're watching the market go down and we see dealers doing dumb shit like this, we're watching, oh, it's called musical chairs. Basically, sales managers are getting fired. They're all getting up, moving one dealership over and sitting back down. And the new sales manager is gonna clean up all the old sales managers BS, which is the exact same thing. They're gonna start selling all these older cars. But we've seen this in a few markets, but not all the way across the United States. So that's why I'm telling you guys right now, if you're looking at buying a car, please be patient because the dominoes have already started to fall. You can see how people are just not buying cars. You can see on the news now, they're talking about how people are lowering prices. If you're looking at EVs, used EV sales are collapsing. Like it's awful. I've seen people lose 30, 40% of their vehicle value on some of these used EVs. If you wanna buy a new EV, they're just sitting there on the lot. Go ahead and make an offer. Now, you can watch and buy these things and probably get great deals, but also the regular used car market is not going to slow down as much. I hate everybody saying, there's a crash, there's a crash. It, the market is going to slowly correct itself. We just need that one major domino to topple the rest. Now, there are things showing that the prices are gonna drop significantly in the next 90 days. With higher interest rates, lack of sales, and lack of demand, all of these things basically say, hey, let's lower the prices. Also, dealers are gonna to have to come to grips with what I just showed you. They're gonna to have to basically say, you know what? We're gonna to have to lower the price of these cars. We're gonna to have to let these things go. And now that dealers are saying that they're not moving cars, that they're sitting there a lot longer, now they're being held accountable by either the ownership or management group and watch how fast the market turns in the next 90 days. Now, I'd love to hear your guys' opinion on the market. Do you see the prices going down in your area? Did you know that dealers have that much of a high holding cost when it comes to vehicles and that's why some of these guys refuse to actually lower prices? You know, in Vegas, we've seen new cars actually selling for under MSRP. I've seen a lot of uh, used car dealers lower prices, but unfortunately, I've seen a lot of used car dealers go out of business because they refuse to lower prices and eventually these flooring companies, these lines of credit will come and if you don't sell their cars and you don't make the payments, they basically take all the cars off your lot and you're out of business. I did a video about maybe two months ago talking about how my dealership, I was gonna start a new one in Vegas, winded up not getting approved by the city and state, broke my heart, it was a great spot, it was two acres, but I couldn't find anything like that. Well now, since I've made that video in those short two months, about 10 dealers have gone out of business here in Vegas. So there's a lot of areas that I'm probably gonna look at to hopefully get a new dealership going. So this way we can either start selling cars to the public, um, we can do some sales training. So if you wanna fly down to Vegas, learn how to buy and sell and work on cars, that was my whole goal with this project. I kind of put it off because there was nothing there, but I didn't think that it would happen this quick. And as I watched these flooring companies shut down these dealerships and these dealerships go out of business because they can't sell cars, this is proof that the market is going in a you say a right direction, I say wrong direction. The market's gonna correct itself and get to back to where it was before. Now, will prices be as low as they were back in 2019? Probably not. But remember, the expensive cars are going down in value, the cheap cars are going up. So if you're watching this video and you're a dealer, buy something cheap, hold it. I promise you in the next few months it'll be worth more because people can't get a, a, an affordable car. And if you're looking at selling your cheap car, don't, hold on to it because you will not be able to replace it for the same amount of money. Anyways, I want to thank you guys for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe if you learned anything. Also, follow me on Instagram, at Lucky Lopez. I do tons of funny shit every single day. We post on there daily. Also, I, I put cars up there for sale sometimes, too, that we're allowed to sell to the public. Everything else we take to the auction until we get our dealer's license, and hopefully we can start selling everybody cars. But anyways, I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.